Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Cozy Rainbow Podcast. My name is Tammy, but my students know me as Miss Haddad. My name is Joe, and I have no students. And today we are talking all about James Madison, which might seem like a niche topic, but we're actually more specifically going to be talking about the crystal flute that he owned and how the pop artist Lizzo recently was allowed by the Librarian of Congress to play James Madison's crystal flute. Yeah, that's, that's a significantly less niche topic. Yes. So, without further ado, let's do some trivia. So, Joe, question one. I'm sure you'll know the answer to this one. <laughs> what makes you say that? <laughs> Number one, how old was Lizzo when she learned how to play the flute? Oh, this isn't multiple choice? I just got No, it's not multiple choice. Give I can give you multiple choice if you want. Is it oh. A, kindergarten, B, fourth grade, C, fifth grade, or D, sixth grade? Fourth grade. Okay. Number two, true or false? First lady, Dolly Todd, honored James Madison's death by emancipating all of the slaves left on their property. Uh, true. Okay, true. Number three, this one is multiple choice. Where can James Madison's crystal flute be found today? A, the Library of Congress. B, Lizzo's flute collection. C, the Museum of James Galway. Or D, the White House. Uh, I mean, well, I doubt they'd let Lizzo take home some... You might be surprised. Well... I did already give the answer to this one away, though. Well, like right there, just now? No. No, when we first started the episode... And I said what we were talking about today. I gave the answer away. Well, yeah, the Library of Congress. Okay, great. So we will be back with the answers, the real answers to these trivia questions and everything you need to know about James Madison's crystal flute and Lizzo right after this quick message from our sponsors. Oh, my God. James Madison was the fourth president of the United States, not the third. Literally before we were recording, I said he was the third president, but that's not true. He's the fourth president. It goes, it goes Washington, Washington Adams. Adams, Jefferson, Madison, James Madison. So he was the fourth president of the United States, born in 1751. Great year. <laughs> great, For what? Great year to be a founding father. Great, great year to have a white wig. Great year to be an old white dude. The oldest letter preserved from James Madison was in 1769, and it was to a slave named Sawney that had known James since he was a baby. The letter was pretty much talking about how Sawney would actually go with James Madison to Princeton University in New Jersey, so they would relocate together from Madison's home state of Virginia. So they were actually, I mean... Of course, you know, slavery was really unethical and stuff, but I think Sonny and James Madison were actually pretty tight. Well, that's an upside, I guess. A weird, in a way, upside. In from a, way. a certain point of view. Yeah. So James Madison went to Princeton University and graduated in 1771 at age 20. Weirdly, in his graduation portrait, James Madison looks pretty old. He has wrinkles and white hair, even though he's only 20. So... I believe we're going to talk a little bit about the whole powdered hair thing in a minute. So he does look kind of old, but it's because the average person would only live to be about 30 years old in the 1770s. You, I think that today the life expectancy, it's about 80 years old, I believe. That's, I think that's about right. Imagine spending two thirds of your life in school. I mean. Doctoral oh. students right now are quaking. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay. So. Out of the nation's first five presidents, George Washington was the only one that did not wear a wig, but instead he powdered his hair white. And having white hair was a symbol of wealth and knowledge. So, Joe, have you ever heard of the term big wig? Yes, I have. Who would you describe as a big wig? Uh, I don't know. Principal. <laughs> a principal, yeah. Yeah. The principal would be a big wig. Sure, that's a good example. Yeah. So the term big wig comes from this era in time, James Madison era in the 1770s, because the bigger the wig, the bigger the brain. Duh. The it makes really good sense. Really, really good sense? It makes a lot of sense. Knowledge is stored in the hair. Knowledge is, They probably, I don't know if they knew that. They probably, not that we know much about the brain today, but. Oh, oh, those people were crazy about skulls way back when. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, 
James Madison, the most interesting thing about him, besides his wig in his 20s and looking like he has gray hair, is that he actually expressed quite a bit that slavery is morally wrong. And he really was against it, but he still owned slaves. And it's because it's kind of like that thing, like, you know how people, some people today go off to college and their mom has been doing their laundry their whole life and they don't know how to do laundry. So it's like James Madison had slaves. He was like, slaves are wrong, but he didn't know how to do his laundry or things like that. So he kind of was like really reliant on slaves, such as his pal, Sonny, that we mentioned earlier that he still owned slaves, even though he thought it was wrong. That's quite the metaphor. (laughs) You know me, metaphorical. So James Madison did argue that slavery is not in alignment with American ideals, and it went against the American constitution that men could not be property. Wow. It's like, it's it's so crazy. What's the word for that? There's like a psychological term. Cognitive dissonance. Oh. He was having cognitive dissonance about it. So, yeah, it was like he, James Madison thought it was against the American Constitution that men could be property. He even married a woman, Dolly Todd, who is the first lady they mentioned. And Dolly Todd's family actually emancipated their slaves. We can't know exactly what James Madison was thinking other than what he wrote in some really old documents. So most of this information is coming from actual letters that James Madison wrote that are still stored in the Library of Congress today. Oh, wow. In 1801, when James Madison's father died, James inherited hundreds of slaves and he did not emancipate them. By the way, for anybody listening, if you don't know what the word emancipate means, it basically means to free his slaves, to let them be free and not so be his, slaves anymore. So his wife, his wife set all the, her slaves free. Well, his wife's family. I don't think that his wife necessarily, it wasn't like her call. It wasn't her slaves. But yeah, he married somebody who whose family did not have slaves. They, they set them free. They emancipated them. Huh. Well, that's, that's kind of strange. Yeah. So yeah, James did not, he inherited hundreds of slaves when his dad died. And he did not emancipate the slaves. He actually kept them until he died. And when he died, He asked his wife, Dolly, to emancipate them because he was too reliant on them. Like I said, he probably didn't know how to do laundry and Mm. stuff. Yikes. Yikes. Why are we letting a president who can't... Actually, wait a second. Well, I was like, wait, did they do laundry back then? They probably just didn't... They didn't have laundry machines. You never never seen the... uh, You You never seen a wash... Yeah. (laughs) A washboard and a basin and uh, scrubbing your clothes on the thing. Yeah. So he didn't want to do that, which is probably why he kept the slaves. Yikes. So James Madison requested that Dolly would only sell the slaves with the slaves' consent. So he said, you either emancipate them or you can sell them, but only if they say it's okay. I don't know what kind of slave would consent to that, but like, whatever. I guess he's kind of trying to be ethical in a way. Unfortunately, Dolly ended up selling these slaves to pay off some personal debts. Oh. So she didn't even listen to her late husband. Yikes. That's that's never a good situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it happens all the time. Dang it, what do you do when your husband dies and tells you to emancipate the slaves, but you have personal debt? The personal debt probably wasn't even her problem. I mean, I don't know what kind of debt. What kind of debt? This is the part where I was so shocked because I was like, what kind of president? Like, the country is brand new. Shouldn't he have money? Like, didn't... Like, wouldn't being the president be, like, probably one of the most, like, prestigious salaries at the time? Like, Next high... time on the Cozy Rainbow podcast, the national debt. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, thank you. You can cover that one, Joe. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be riveting. Yeah. So, like I said, I gave the laundry, meta- the laundry metaphor, but here's a direct quote from slavery.princeton.edu. So, this is kind of like Princeton's comment since they... People... Who went to Princeton in the very beginning of time, probably pretty much not the very beginning of time. Nope, that would be dinosaurs. People who went to... In in 1492, when Christopher Columbus invented time. Yeah, no. Princeton's comment on slavery and James Madison. They have a whole webpage on this, which I think is interesting and probably utmost importance to them because people who went to Princeton, when Princeton first opened... Pretty much all had slaves. I'm pretty much certain because to be, you had to be a man to go to college at the time and you had to be a white man to go to college in America at the time. So Princeton's beginnings, I mean, yikes. So their reparations are to have 
a web page that says this. Ultimately, Madison's personal dependence on slavery led him to question his own once enlightened definition of liberty itself. As it hopefully should. Yeah. So that being said, also, I would just like to point out that a couple weeks ago, I actually met a descendant of James Madison. I know. Joe looks shocked. Uh, do you have the last name? I think it was Madison. Wait, I don't remember. Whatever. I don't need to say his name on the podcast. But yeah, I met him and everybody at the table was like, oh, yeah, we are having dinner. It was like a dinner conference. and Everybody at the table was like, oh, my God, you must have like so much family wealth like that you've inherited. And because I had been doing research on this podcast, I got to stand up for this man. And I said, no, y'all, literally James Madison left his family in debt. And the debt continues when we we're going to get onto this crystal flute here. So what does crystal flute have to do with James Madison? Well, a French instrument maker named Claude Laurent gifted the flute to James Madison in 1813. Laurent was the inventor of a new type of glass flute. Flutes before this time were only made of wood or ivory. And ivory is like elephant tusk, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this was before the metal flute was invented, the glass flute. I mean, not glass. Well, yeah, glass. Crystal glass flute was invented. And so now let's get into Lizzo. Lizzo is a black musician who studied classical flute starting in fifth grade. Uh, One number, one number. One number, so close. She incorporates flute into her performances and songs along with unique and energizing dance moves. If you've never seen a Lizzo performance, I recommend it. There's a video that went viral of the second grade teacher in her class at Los Medanos Elementary School. If you want to see it, look it up. It's, it's pretty cute. So she inspires her students every morning, and she remixed the lyrics to Truth Hurts by Lizzo as her class morning song. So it starts off by saying, I just took an ELA test. Turns out I'm 100% that smart. And then it goes on. But I just thought I would sing the first verse for us. Well, that's nice. Do you know the song Truth Hurts? I don't think you do. No. No. It starts off the same way. Oh, no, it, it's a, it starts off by saying, I just took a DNA test. Anyway, back to James Madison. So James Madison had a son with First Lady Dolly. His name was John Todd. Literally, he's the bad boy of the White House. What on earth is that supposed to mean? Well, yeah, I, I don't really know. Well, I do know, but... He's considered the bad boy for reasons that transcend this podcast. So if you want to know why he's considered the bad boy of the White House, you can look it up. It literally, it was either, I think it was on the, let me see. John Todd bad boy, Google. This was from whitehousehistory.org slash the dash bad dash boy. I'm like, wow. You can find an article about John Todd. So yeah, anyway, John Todd. John Bad Boy Todd inherited that crystal flute from his parents and he gifted it to the doctor that treated him while he was dying because the son was in debt too. Mr. Bad Boy, surprise, surprise, he was also in debt. So the only way that he could pay his doctor was to give said crystal flute to the doctor. So this doctor, the, after the doctor died, his heirs, the people who inherited the flute from him, They donated the crystal flute in 1903 to the United States National Museum. Now, you would think that from the United States National Museum, it would just go to the Library of Congress. But if you thought that, you were sorely mistaken. The United States National Museum sold the flute to some guy named Dayton C. Miller, who is not just some guy, but like this is what I'm saying where I don't think it's really all that unrealistic that somebody like Lizzo could own James Madison's crystal flute. I... I mean, I guess so. I mean... So go ahead, ask me who Dayton C. Miller is. Who's Dayton C. Miller? Well, I'm so glad you asked, Joe. He is a man who collected over 1,700 instruments. That's 1,700 instruments. I mean, I'd I'd expect a collector to want such a neat little flute, but... Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, Dayton C. Miller, he donated the crystal flute to the Library of Congress in 1941. Do you think that's interesting? I do. Huh. Obviously. Because I wrote this whole thing. I mean, yeah, that's that's a weird little path for 
the neat little flute to take to the Library of Congress. Yeah, it is interesting. You would think that the flute just went directly to the Library of Congress, but that, it didn't. Hypothetically, that's where it's supposed to be, right? I mean, I think it depends on the Librarian of Congress. Like, would they care about a weird flute or not? You know what I mean? I feel I, like yeah, James Madison, I don't even think that he played the flute. I guess... Oh, wait, huh? Yeah, I don't, I really did try to look into that, and I really don't think that he did. But there was nothing, obviously there's no videos of James Madison playing the flute, so it's like... He's not bragging about his flute playing skills in his letters. Yeah, he's not. He didn't study flute at Princeton. Huh. If a, if ja- if a tree falls in a forest and nobody hears it, did it, did it ever exist? If James Madison played a flute and nobody ever heard it, did he really play the flute? I mean... I guess that's all the better for the for the flute because it's very little used. Right, a slave owner has never actually played the crystal flute. Fresh pristine belongs in a museum. Yeah. Or a library, I guess. Well, I bet the the creator of the flute, Mr. Laurent, I bet he played the flute to like test it out before he like sent it overseas I, well, as a gift. <laughs> overseas. To James Madison. Oh, yeah, he... he was French. Oh. It's from France. I should have guessed from the last name Laurent. Laurent. Yeah. Well, French flutes are like kind of all the all the rage. You never hear about American flutes. You know, it's what I mean? all France and Italy. They they love they love to have their, their uh, classical good, music. Their their instruments. They're all crazy good. Crazy good. Allegedly. Okay. So yeah, Dean C. Miller donates to the Library of Congress. Now, Library of Congress. Doctor Carla Hayden, the woman, the myth, the legend. She was sworn in as a librarian of Congress in 2016. <laughs> That's. Sworn in as a librarian is a very dramatic sentence for a librarian. It's the Library of Congress. Yes, it is. But so it's... this is the place where they keep all of James Madison's old letters and flutes and other things like that, like really important American things. When you think of important American government people, you think like, oh, Dr. Carla Hayden. The... <laughs> you think <laughs> now the... you do. You think of the president and the no. the secretaries of whatever. Dr. And... Carla Hayden for president. Like library. Librarian just sounds so pedestrian, but like, yeah, you, you're you're a part of the government. It's a big deal. You got to be sworn in. Yeah, no, I think she's a baddie. So, and here's why I think she's a baddie. The Librarian of Congress is the largest library in the world. So, how's that, small potatoes for you? Hmm? Oh, oh wow. Yeah. I bet you never huh. imagined. I I I I would have. I bet thought, you feel real silly now. I would have thought that like an older like America's a young country. We like. Well, how many things could we possibly want to put in a library? Doesn't like like China or something have like a bigger library or you something? You know what? When I read that, it's okay. The Library of Congress website is where I read that. So like, oh. <laughs> I can I'm with you on that. It doesn't seem like it should be the world's largest library, but I don't know. America's kind of a capitalistic country, so maybe they just like bought a bunch of stuff. Or they put like dumb stuff. Not dumb. It's not dumb. James Madison's crystal flute is not dumb. Maybe it's just because all their all their important documents are still so new that we can like actually care about like some random letters that Washington and Madison and yada yada wrote to each other. And yeah, like so maybe we just have newer, better preserved stuff than like you know ancient dusty old That's whatever true. people. That's write. true. Like eventually the paper like that kind of stuff can be really hard to yeah. preserve so that could be it or it could be like i said what if like you know what if they wanted what if there's like a piano key from george washington's piano in the library of congress it's like <laughs> you know who decides what goes in there probably maybe the librarian of congress anyway that's total tangent so biggest library yeah according to self-proclaimed <laughs> biggest library in the world Dr. Carla Hayden is the first African American to lead the National Library. Before Dr. Hayden worked in the library, she won an award for her homework help after school center at the Pratt Library in Baltimore, Maryland. I love that for her. That's very nice. Yeah, I think it's nice too. It makes me trust her. So Lizzo was invited by Dr. Carla Hayden via tweet to play the crystal flute, to which Lizzo enthusiastically accepted. So I thought the tweet is actually really funny. She like tweeted back. She's like, I'm coming, Carla, like exclamation point, exclamation point. And so, yeah, you can check out all those videos of Lizzo playing the crystal flute. It's really interesting because the Library of Congress website, I don't know how many people normally get visitors. I mean, how many people they normally have as visitors at the Library of Congress website. 
But I'm telling you, this article about James Madison's crystal flute was popping. All the comments were about Lizzo. So thank you, Lizzo, for bringing this little piece of American history to light and making people actually care about it. I mean, some people care about history anyway, but I was intrigued as a flute lover and a Lizzo to lover. Give the layman the opportunity yes. to know that James Madison had a crystal flute. It's like, why would he, we have cared until Lizzo? What a Lizzo... bizarre little factoid to now know about. You'd be surprised. And I've been able to, since researching this episode, it's come up in casual conversation quite a lot. And people are fascinated and intrigued. How ironic. A crystal flute breaking the ice. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> so this week, this is more of an optional creative challenge. So send it if you want. I'm not going to put a deadline on this one. Because we are actually going to take a break here on Cozy Rainbow Podcast. We're taking a pretty hefty hiatus. Dun, dun, dun. Until after Christmas. So we'll be back in the new year to celebrate the new year. We'll be new. And fresh. And we'll have a bunch of new fresh episodes for you. With that being said, thank you so much to everybody who submitted in our last round of creative challenges. I want to give just a short creative challenge optional with no deadline some people think it's cool that lizzo played james madison's flute other people think that james madison flute should be kept under lock and key as a historical artifact i want to know from listeners what is your opinion if you were dr carla hayden the librarian of congress would you invite lizzo on twitter to play the flute or would you just keep it very secure locked away in uh in the big old safe because you know it's a god, it's god a, forbid anything happens to a crystal flute it's an important historical artifact and, and who knows who knows what might happen if you take it out if you break it like oh if you break it there's only one of those right we could never have another crystal flute but well, she's not gonna break it you another know, lizzo, crystal flute owned by james madison yeah i guess so but lizzo she's not gonna break it she literally was remember how james madison owned this flute and didn't even play the flute and lizzo like has a classical flute playing degree and she's like one of the biggest pop stars in the world in fact i was super inspired by her to keep playing flute because she made playing flute cool i think and popular what like are- she uses it in her music and it sounds really good but not in like a weird classical music way like most people don't listen to classical music it's cool and hip and not you know stuffy and old and powdered wiggy yeah exactly <laughs> exactly i wonder if there's still some wig powder on the flute when she played it oh my God. she's like ah, what is this oh. so joe what's your opinion lizzo seems like classically trained flute person flautiste that's the word right sure i don't really have a preference as someone who plays the flute i never cared people always ask me is it flutist or flautist and you know what I'm- as a classically tra- trained fluter fl- flute or tutor as a classically trained flute tutor Mm-hmm. I think she was probably responsible enough to. She seems to toot on that flute. Yeah, she do be tuning. She. <laughs> she seems qualified to handle it. Yep. As far as musical musicality goes, mm-hmm. uh, and it's not exactly like the. It, it's not exactly the apex important sort of piece of American history. Right. It's not like they had her like. At the, I mean, at the same time, you don't want to just throw around like willy nilly yeah she of... only played it for like a couple for like a couple minutes i think and then they put it away to preserve it so people could look at it i guess yeah. it's honestly impressive that it still worked like my flute i keep it in my closet and i play it maybe like once or twice every year oh but i'm sure the library of congress is like all sorts of professional flute maintenance so people. they have a flute maintenance professional work on the flute but then nobody can actually play it I don't know. I feel like, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But now everybody knows about the crystal flute. So I th- personally, I think it's awesome that Lizzo played it. It's inspiring and a fun factoid and icebreaker about American history, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this week's creative challenge is to yeah, just send us a little bit of writing about that. Pretty chill, pretty relaxed. Let's go back over those trivia questions. So, Joe, number one, how old was Lizzo when she learned how to play the flute? What grade was she in? She was in fourth grade. I mean, <laughs> fifth grade. Fifth grade. They both start with an F. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. 
Yeah, I guess they do. Yeah. Number two, true or false, First Lady Dolly Todd honored James Madison's death by emancipating all the slaves left on their property. Against his wishes, false. False. What did she do instead, and why did she do it? But she sold it because she was in debt. Yikes. Number three, where can James Madison's crystal flute be found today? The Library of Congress. Woohoo. Nice job, Joe. 